Okay, good morning, everyone. Matt Braden here from the GPAR team. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Um, we had some, some nice weather, so hopefully you got out to enjoy the good weather, um, get some fresh air and all that stuff. And uh, hopefully everything is going well business-wise. Um, we have a really great coffee talk lined up for today, but also uh, we want to look ahead to next week. We have some really great guests uh, set up. So a week from tomorrow, we're going to have the NAR president, Vince Malta, join us. So that would be really great. He'll be uh, tuning in from San Francisco, which is licking their wounds this morning after the Eagles won and somehow with a losing record are in first place. It's 2020, folks. Just embrace it, right? <laughs> <laughs> one, two, and one, and they're in first place. Um, crazy stuff. Um, and then we will close out the end of next week uh, with another coffee talk, nine o'clock on Friday. And we are going to have Terry Madonna talk with us. He is um, very well known within the region, uh, looking at po politics, polling, and he is going to talk to us about um, the presidential race and read the tea leaves and give us his thoughts and impressions about what he is seeing from the race. Um, and let's face it, uh, a week from Friday, a whole heck of a lot of stuff can happen because in the current uh, world that we live in, um, a day is kind of like a lifetime. So anyway, we have some really great stuff lined up and that takes us to this morning of which we have a conversation that kind of ties in with what Terry, Dr. Terry Madonna will be speaking with us next week, but we're getting it from a different vantage point. So we're really, really grateful to have David Thornburg with us this morning to talk about the Committee of 70, the work that they do, and the critical role that they play in our electoral landscape. So with that, I hand it off to Stephanie. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Matt. Thank you. And good morning, David, and good morning, all our GPAR members. Hope you're having a wonderful morning. Um, so David, welcome to our GPAR Coffee Talk, and we're thrilled to have you. Um, so let's, let's introduce you to our members. Um, maybe some members aren't familiar with the Committee of 70 and, and what it does, but before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about you and where you grew up and where you went to school. Sure. Uh, I grew up in Pittsburgh, actually, uh, home of the <coughs> undefeated Steelers. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you can't shake your sports loyalties, I'm sorry. Um, and uh, my wife and I have lived in Philadelphia for 35 years now. And uh, so it's home. And uh, we have lived for 33 of those years in the northwest part of the city. So we've lived in, now we live in Chestnut Hill, where we raised our daughters. And um, so, uh, I, which uh, just, you know, love this, the, love this part of the city. And I went to I originally came to the Philadelphia region because I went to Haverford College and my wife is a Bryn Mawr College graduate. So we started out on the main line and then made our way into the city. But, um, but yeah, thanks. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad to share a cup of coffee with you folks. Awesome. Thank you. Well, how are you and your family dealing with 2020? It's quite the year this year. Yeah, well, it sure <laughs> is. I mean, you know, my, my wife and I are, are doing great. Um, we, uh, uh, are fortunate in that, uh, where, where I was going to say, we're fortunate in that our kids have left home, <laughs> <laughs> which doesn't sound quite right. But so it's just us and our two dogs in a, in a pretty comfortable house here in Chestnut Hill. So, uh, but you know, like, like everyone, I think just the, the stresses of not being able to see family. One of our daughters is on the West coast and, you know, I've only seen my, my parents live in, um, outside of Pittsburgh in a, in a retirement community. I've only seen them once in, in since March and, you know, they're getting on in years. So it, probably, you know, no news to anybody. It's just a lot of stresses and, and strains. And, and then of course, professionally, you know, we're just up to our eyeballs in this uh, election and doing everything we can to make sure that, that Philadelphia, uh, you know, that we hold our heads high in terms of the, how we run this election because uh, that's that's really, really, really important this time out. 
Yeah, I feel your pain with that, with the family. Hopefully soon we'll, we'll be able to visit the loved ones. Um, and I've seen my parents once too. And yeah. uh, it's, it's tough, but hopefully we're, we're getting a little closer and um, we'll get over this sooner rather than later. Okay, so let's talk about the election this year. This sure. is um, quite the election and um, in a very strange year. So let's talk about the Committee of 70, what it is and how, did, how was it formed? Yep, so we were born uh, in 1904, so that makes us 116 years old. And we were founded by a, uh, a group of business and civic leaders who were concerned about the way Philadelphia was governed and the way we ran elections. Um, and uh, decided that they had both an obligation and an opportunity to do something about it. So um, our uh, founders, uh, I'm trying to think if there were any real estate people around that founding table. I'm, I'm sure there were, but a couple of lawyers, a couple of um, well-known figures, uh, Samuel Fells, who a lot of folks know from his philanthropic endeavors, uh, is uh, was, was one of them. And... Uh, so that's how we were founded and, and one of our uh, sort of planks in our platform has always been to protect and improve the voting process. And that, mean, that means different things at different times. Um, you know, voting and, and the way we do democracy has changed quite a bit as has the world since then. So that puts us front and center in this, um, in this process and um, you know, we operate, we have a number of sort of tools in our toolkit. We have active uh, conversations with the media. So there we function as kind of a, uh, a, a, a nonpartisan source of, uh, uh, of comment and commentary and sometimes uh, public scolding, <laughs> which uh, uh, still has a role. But, you know, we also believe that our local democracy works best when lots of people get engaged and lots of people get informed. So this election, for reasons that we'll talk about, we've put a lot of emphasis into, into educating voters um, about the particulars of, of voting and, and how you vote by mail, which is in particular, which is a, a brand new thing. And then there's just a lot of swirling confusion around how this election is gonna come off and, and what role individual voters have to play and how what they do to to make sure that their vote counts. And I should have said by now, my, my backdrop is what we call the, uh, our votes wagon, um, which is a, uh, uh, actually is in my driveway too. It's my personal uh, Volkswagen camper, but we had it wrapped in this uh, election season to make some important messages, including you can probably see that, uh, that, we, uh, that we make your vote count. And, that's a that that is message has become front and center in this election because um, with all the new procedures in place again, which we'll talk about, there are lots of there are lots more ways for for voters uh, votes not to count, uh, and that's that's a, a huge issue for us. So, short story is we have our our hands full uh, here in in Philadelphia and in in Pennsylvania. Um, I'll just say just one other thing before we move on. You know, we are also an advocate for uh, reforms that we believe could improve the um, transparency, accountability, and the uh, accessibility of our local democracy or local democratic process. We've been very vocal around the issue of gerrymandering, which we can talk some more about, and looking for ways to engage more citizens in the process of drawing election maps. And another thing that our board and, and we believe strongly in is that uh, Pennsylvania uh, should allow uh, people who are registered as independents to vote in primary elections. It's one of the few states that, that uh, forbids independent voters to vote in primaries. And we think that that causes harm to the way we, we govern. So there's, we got a lot of, we got short-term election issues, longer-term reform issues. Um, and I, I should just end this bit by saying, you know, we have a, a board of, uh, of about 60 uh, upstanding corporate and civic and professional leaders 
and we rely on them for their support and their guidance. And that's, that's always been a big part of who we are in the city of Philadelphia and Pennsylvania. Very interesting. Okay, so we recently had Commissioner Al Schmidt on uh, mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago with our um, coffee talk, and he talked about more. I just left a phone call with him. He was. Oh, uh, did you? Started my morning with Commissioner Schmidt. Yep. So that was my question. Um, what is the relationship between um, your organization and his commission, or City of Philadelphia, and also the state? Because you you don't also do not only Philadelphia, you're Pennsylvania right. too, correct? So our, our relationship with the commissioners is an interesting one. If you, if you followed our activity about uh, five or six years ago, we were making a strong argument that the office of the city commissioner should be abolished and that their function should be replaced with a single uh, elections professional who would report to the mayor, uh, which is the way most cities run elections. We have a very arcane, outdated, inefficient uh, process where we elect three people uh, to do that job. And um, uh, it's, a, it's a tough job to be run by three people who are, are, are ele elected officials. Um, and so anyway, you could go back five or six years and you'll find me ranting and raving about how we got to get rid of these people. Not the people, the, uh, the offices. Well, here we are, we were unsuccessful in that. We haven't given up, but we've hit pause on that uh, because frankly, we, uh, we want to make sure, as I said at the outset, that we do everything we can to, um, to pull off a safe and secure and efficient election process this time around. So early this year, maybe January, we kind of um, uh, offered our help to the city commissioners in uh, doing what we could to uh, uh, support them in, in pulling off this extraordinary election. So we now have a very uh, uh, collaborative relationship and are doing what we can, again, to support them in several different ways. Uh, but that, that doesn't, you know, down the road, uh, you know, we, we very well may uh, pick up our previous position and, and see if we can enact the kinds of reforms that we think we should. Um, you know, I, I have nothing but good things to say about Al Schmidt. He is a, he's a dedicated public servant and um, he's very smart and he works hard. And I think he, he understands very well uh, the consequences of, of uh, this uh, election. And I don't mean the outcome. I mean, you know, we've got to make sure that again, that uh, that, that Philadelphia runs a safe, secure, and efficient election. And, um, and then, you know, where the chips fall, the chips fall uh, statewide or nationally. But we cannot be, because I suspect a lot of you remember this, we cannot be Palm Beach County, Florida of 2020. We, that that, that is, is a uh, failure is not an option, as they say. Right. So when you say you support um, the commissioner, um, the committee will support them. What exactly is it that the committee of 70 will, what's the role that you'll play? Is it education? Is it um, well, manning the polls your, or? Yeah, you put your finger on one thing. We uh, launched a massive voter education and awareness campaign called We Vote uh, that basically employs, um, that, that works through networks of companies and associations, could be you folks, in fact, to, uh, to reach voters uh, with the voter education materials and content that we have. And uh, the, the premise is, so we've got maybe 45 partners signed on to this WeVote platform. And, you know, this is like Independence Blue Cross, PICO, law firms, Children's Hospital, whatever. So we're encouraging them to reach their employees or their members through their, uh, their you know, standard communications channels with the voter education and awareness uh, and materials that, that we have. Um, and, uh, and it's going really well. We also have media partners, 6ABC and KYW and, um, 
uh, Channel 10, I think, and you know, a bunch of others. So we're just doing everything we can to amplify the, the important messages around not just get out and vote, but um, you know, okay, I want to vote by mail. Exactly how do I do that and not, um, and not uh, screw it up? So, um, so we vote is is our campaign, and I'd be delighted to you know hook up you and your membership with our staff person who's running that, and we can you know do a briefing for you and so forth because we're getting into you know short strokes as they say uh, uh, on this election. So that's a lot of what we're doing, and then maybe there's a, a quieter piece which is to uh, help the commissioners manage this extraordinary. Um, this extraordinary election, it's, you know, they say often, and it's worth repeating, that because of the pandemic and because of this um, upwelling of interest in voting by mail, they in Philadelphia and all the counties are trying to run two parallel elections at the same time, a vote by mail operation and a voting in person operation. And you don't really know, because there's no good way to forecast it, exactly how many people will choose to vote by mail or to vote in person. Um, so you have to kind of add extra capacity into the mix. And so as someone said, what you ought to plan to do is, is that 70% of your voters will vote by mail and 70% will vote in person, which is obviously mathematically impossible, but it, it tells you you have to build that kind of slack into the system and, and then proceed down that, that path. Uh, very, very quickly. So uh, that's what the city is uh, faced with doing, and we've helped them. They applied for and received a major grant from a nonprofit uh, organization around uh, in the country that has offered that to other jurisdictions, and we help with them, help them prepare that grant proposal and then execute its implementation, which is ongoing. That's what allowed, and we can talk about this later, the city just opened seven satellite uh, offices last week that is a makes voting more accessible and convenient for voters. That was a result of this grant that they got that, that we helped them with. And, um, you know, it's, it's just a, a, a time where we got to be looking for creative solutions like that and then, and then executing them. Okay, so you guys have been on the forefront of civic advocacy for over a century. Um, can you share with us some of the major accomplishments from this committee? Because I was reading some of them and they're quite impressive. So sure. if you want to talk about your favorites or your, your, your yeah. uh, biggest well, accomplishments. We have been around for 116 years. I've been there for <laughs> six of them. <laughs> so, and I won't bore you with some minutiae of what happened in 1923, because frankly, I don't know what it was. But maybe most recently and most significantly, we were the, the prime voice for change around uh, uh, enacting limits on campaign contributions in Philadelphia, and then also um, severing the tie between uh, the pay and the play, meaning uh, making it much more difficult to make a political contribution and then be rewarded with a city contract. And for those of you around at the time, uh, this was a uh, you know, a, a very tough period we went through in Philadelphia in the early 2000s where uh, in Mayor Street's administration, um, 27 public officials and par private officials were either indicted, were indicted, convicted, or pled guilty uh, to uh, corruption charges. Uh, the, and it was a massive series of pay to play schemes. And, and as a result of that, we stepped forward and organized people and organized uh, uh, financial support to, to work with the incoming mayor, Nutter, and city council, including Jim Kenney, uh, to enact these reforms. So Philadelphia, uh, and the other thing, by the way, was not only limits on contributions and, and trying to end pay to play, but also dramatically strengthening our board of ethics here in the, in the city that, that uh, Shane Kramer has run very capably since then. So you know, we're, we think that was a major step forward um, in, in trying to tighten up and make more transparent and more uh, accountable 
uh, the way we, we do politics in this city. And we say at the same breath, like we have not ended political corruption for all time in Philadelphia. We understand that. It, it requires constant vigilance and, uh, and constant attention to processes like that. But we're much better off as a result of those changes than we were, uh, than we were uh, without them. So maybe I'll, I'll just leave it at that because uh, that's, you know, that's a 15 years ago example. I think of a major contribution that, that, that 70 made I'll, I'll tell you in real time, you know, uh, we're, we've been very active around this gerrymandering issue, which has entered people's consciousness in, in ways that it never has before. Uh, gerrymandering being the partisan drawing of electoral maps uh, to benefit incumbents or to benefit one party or the other. And uh, our major effort on that has been, it's on the front of the van, if you can see it, it's called Draw the Lines PA, which is a, a massive citizen engagement effort to, to bring uh, Pennsylvania citizens into the map drawing process. So we basically made it possible by providing data and software for 6,000 Pennsylvanians to draw their own electoral maps making the point that people are ready, willing, and able to take, up this, uh, to take up this important part of democracy. And we will intend going forward, a lot of people, you folks may know, but a lot of people don't know that every 10 years we have to redraw city council maps as well, uh, which is, is really significant in terms of how you uh, build your, uh, or, or hold on to your power as a district council person. So our intent is to bring that kind of public engagement to the, the city council map drawing process as, as well, which frankly has never been true in the past. Um, drawing, when it comes to drawing maps, it's typically been done, whether it's the state level or at the city level, behind closed doors by a few very self-interested folks. Um, and there are really corrosive consequences to that. So that's an issue that we've been We've been on for about four or five years now. And um, uh, next year, once we clear this election, next year is going to be really important uh, for that issue. And, and, you know, if we can pull it off, I, I really think it, it does move us towards more accountable, more transparent, more uh, accessible uh, local democracy, which is, you know, that's, that's very core to our values and to our mission. So let's stay on that topic. Uh -huh. the um every 10 years for the city correct yep. and every when is that for the city and the state legislative districts and for the congressional districts in pennsylvania yep and so right now it's not up to the citizens or the constituents of that particular district and so your group is advocating for more inclusion of the constituents exactly. and Yep. where are you with that and i guess this comes back to um education, yep. getting the word out. So yep. where and, you know, if we can do something sure, you know, as a group, as GPAR. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, not surprisingly, that issue is being drowned out right now by the presidential uh, race. Um, but we are at the state level, we've been, uh, we continue to engage people in, in, in this draw the lines PA process. Um, we have competitions. Uh, we've done competitions every uh, uh, twice a year for the last uh, two and a half years, I guess. And we have <clears throat> the winners will announce it in a ceremony, online ceremony on October 13th. Um, and uh, we've got some legislators involved uh, to, uh, to promote, um, you know, the involvement. A lot of them, what's, what's really cool about that is that a lot of the, the, citizens that have taken us up on that Draw the Lines PA offering are uh, young, young folks, high school students, uh, college students from around the city and around, around the Commonwealth. And we remind people that, you know, we're doing this for them or that they're doing this for them because they're the ones that they're, are going to inherit these districts and, and the political process that, that, that creates them. Um, you know, again, once we clear the election, I think things are going to get very heated in 
uh, Harrisburg around this process and then in Philadelphia. And, and we intend, again, and we're happy to talk down the road to you folks, uh, intend to uh, create a, a similar kind of engagement process for Philadelphia citizens in drawing uh, city council maps. Because, I mean, you, you put your finger on it. We, it's our firm belief these districts belong to the people. They don't belong to the temporary occupant of the office that represents them. And anytime you hear a, a, a legislator or a council person talk about my district, uh, it's really not their districts. It's on loan <laughs> from, from the people. And uh, I think that's a, a small but subtle, uh, a small but important distinction that we gotta uh, try to reinforce. So, and, and obviously, you know, it, it doesn't take, I, I suspect you folks more than once have uh, gotten familiar with the issue of councilmanic prerogative here in the city of Philadelphia. And, you know, we grant extraordinary powers to district council people, people about all kinds of things, including uh, development projects. And um, that's a lot easier to do when you can draw your own district and you don't need to include anybody else in the way that district is drawn. So um, this is gonna be, uh, um, I mean, we're looking forward to it, uh, but it's, it's not gonna be a, uh, uh, a slam dunk uh, change. Um, so we welcome that conversation down the road. Again, our world is right now is, 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 um, uh, is differentiated into, you know, now until election week and then after election week. And right now we're just focusing on what we do to get ready for election week. Okay. So the 2020 general elections are approaching. What is the most important information that your organization wants to provide constituents? Well, uh, let me say a couple things. One, the polls will be open. So a lot of concern about where, I'm, where am I going to vote? And uh, I think in Philadelphia and in the counties, the answer is with about 95% assurance, you will be, uh, if you vote in person, you will be voting at your regular po polling place, which is the, the polling place that you used in the fall of 2019. You all probably know that in the this, this spring primary, we dra dramatically reduced the number of polling locations because of COVID-19. But by and large, those will be back in play on November 3rd. So, you know, voting and, you know, everybody's got to make their choice about how they vote. Should not be if they vote, but how they vote. But if you want to vote in person, 95% assurance, it'll be at your regular uh, polling location. And there's several ways you can check that polling location. It's the city's website is phillyvotes.com. You can uh, also go to our website, which is 70.org, the word 70.org, type in your address and it'll spit out your, your polling place. So that's one piece. Voting in person will be uh, back to the process that we had uh, last fall. Second thing is if you vote by mail, and my guess is maybe a third of all voters will choose to vote by mail, there's some really critical things that you have to make sure that you uh, follow, some critical instructions. And, and they're all included in your packet, and I just got mine the other day. Um, but you know, this is, I say to people, this is like, pretend you're applying for a really important job. And you, know, you, you put in your application, you wanna make sure you get all the details right, you, you uh, um, uh, get the, you know, make sure your email address is, is correct and you, you typed everything in the right box and so forth. But, um, you know, the, the basics are blue or black ink, um, that you use both envelopes, the secrecy envelope and the outer envelope, and make sure that both of those are included because if they're not, your vote won't, won't count. Um, and then that you sign the outer envelope and also put your address and, and the current date, the date when you are sending it on the outside envelope. So those are sort of critical pieces to, uh, critical instructions to make sure that your, your vote counts. And um, again, you can find this, it's on also the state's website is votespa.com. So votespa.com, phillyvotes.com, 70.org. There's your lineup of, of websites. 
And then the final thing I would say is, you know, take this, take the opportunity not only to get yourself situated and develop your own plan and follow, figure out what the instructions are, but share that with people. Uh, your family, your friends, your colleagues, social media. This is, there's a, this, I've never seen a more anxious electorate than in 2020. And there's a lot of disinformation and misinformation spinning around. I suspect you folks are, are trusted people in your communities and in your, the neighborhoods in which you work. And um, so take it as your responsibility, not just to look after yourself, but reach out to, you know, three, four, five other people, particularly those folks who are not internet fluent and, uh, and help them and, 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 you know, certainly point them to us or to the other sources. But, you know, that's how, that's the best way this, this whole information campaign works. It's one person contacting three other people who then in church, in turn, contact three other people. I mean, it's because, because, because we, we need to encourage folks to turn to folk, to, to, to sources that they trust. And there's a lot of mistrust out there and there's a lot of intentional mistrust. And um, so it's really a time for, I think people of, uh, who have a position in their communities to, to step forward and be counted. Is there any um, myth that um, has come up that you really are like, want to get out there and say, this is just a myth? Well, there's, there's one that you might've seen, which is um, the president and some of his supporters have suggested over and over again that voting by mail is insecure and that it's open to fraud. And I have to say, I am much more concerned about the myth of voter fraud than I am about the reality. Um, and here again, I would, I would tell you to turn to people uh, close to the ground who are involved in the process and trust their opinions. So trust Al Schmidt. Al Schmidt he is a Republican. He's also a very competent public official. And you know, he would, I think, echo what I'm just saying, which is like this, this myth of voter fraud is just that. So uh, turn to folks again who are, who are local, who know what they're doing, and, uh, and, and rest assured that, that that's, a, that's good information that you're going to get. And then the other, the other thing I remind people is that, um, you know, we somehow live in a, in a world of swirling conspiracies. There's a conspiracy for everything out there. All you got to do is go to Facebook and, you know, just follow a few threads and so forth. But when it comes to voting, I remind people, the vast majority of people who actually make elections work are volunteers. They're folks that are working at the polls, uh, the, the, uh, the people who are behind the table checking you in checking your name, making sure that, you know, that you're on the rolls or, or what have you. And those are the folks, I mean, the way we designed this system in Pennsylvania is those are our neighbors. Those are our friends. That's the, the, the widow that works, that lives down the street that you see walking your dog. And there she is at election day. Or it's the college student that, uh, you know, the neighbor of, neighbor of yours. Um, so, and, and these people do this job uh, not because they're partisan operatives, but because they want to make a contribution to their local democracy. So I, I try to plant that in people's head as a way of questioning these conspiracies that we hear about, because frankly, for a conspiracy to work, you would have to in, in, uh, enroll hundreds or thousands of people like that. And I, it's, just a, it's a non sequitur. I think, really, those people? The, the little old lady walking the dog, she's part of this vast conspiracy to steal your vote or to, 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 to create fraudulent votes. It, it just doesn't add up. So again, uh, turn to trusted sources. I, I'm telling people these days, like push away from the social media table. Like why you would trust anything from some random source that pops up is beyond me. So make it easy on yourself. Take a moratorium from Facebook for the next, uh, till the election. And in, instead, if you have a question, 
Call Al Schmidt's office, talk to us, talk to the person on your block, your committee person who, who knows the story. So there are lots of other ways, guess what? There's lots of other ways to get information and much better ways than social media. So I will get off my soapbox now, but I think you. <laughs> I think That's you okay. Right. So talking about that, about different campaigns on the back of your bus there behind you, I see make my vote count, hashtag um, draw the line PA. Are there any other campaigns the Committee of 70 has um, undertaken to increase um, participation in this election? Sure. Well, uh, I, I also mentioned it's actually not on the bus, the virtual bus, but it's on the real bus. This okay. is we vote uh, voter education campaign. And you can find out about that at wevote.70.org. And that's our sort of networks of networks uh, approach uh, to working with companies and associations to inform their employees or their members about, about voting. Hold on. Please mute yourself. Yeah, from my toilet. Okay, let's go. Are we getting Zoom call? Open it. I don't know. Let's open the door. Matt, can we mute them? There we go. There we go. Okay. Um, so yeah, we vote, and and we figure we we've reached just through our our corporate partners and our community partners, we maybe have reached 500,000 voters in, in the region. Um, so, uh, and then I have to say some of the, the, our local media organizations have really upped their game. Six ABC has been very active. I just did a uh, show with them on Sunday, uh, providing a, a Sunday morning show, just providing basic voter education and outreach. So. You know, I think a lot of folks are surfacing outside the political parties. I mean, you, you obviously can't turn on television or YouTube or anything without getting bombarded with political advertisements these days. But, but a lot of folks like us who are uh, nonpartisan, uh, just approaching this from, a, and you folks too, uh, who are approaching this in terms of our civic duties uh, are stepping forward. And I, I do, I didn't say this, but I think we're going to see record turnout. Uh, in this in this election, a uh, combination of in person and, and vote by mail, maybe getting close to seventy or seventy five percent turnout, which is is really uh, extraordinary. Mm. Um, and and one other thing, you know, we've been saying as often as we can, we should be prepared for election week, not election day. The returns are not going to be in statewide or in Philadelphia at 8.01 p.m. on November 3rd. So relax, sit back, you know, enjoy the spectacle, uh, but be prepared that it's gonna take at least a few days. It's not gonna be weeks or months, but it's gonna take a few days to, to make sure that the count is, is compiled uh, accurately. And, uh, and at that point, we'll, we'll see who's, uh, you know, got one in the W column and who's got one in the in the L column. But but just sit back and relax and resist this notion that, you know, if if the votes aren't counted by 801, then somehow they're not important. Right. Is um I guess is there any preparation for that? Um, I think people are anticipating. You know, they're used to hearing the the, the results like that night. Yeah. Um, but you haven't heard much about that. Like, yeah. you know, it's kind of maybe it's a myth or, you know, separate the fact from myth. Like, realistically, we're not going to have a decision yeah. election night. It's going uh, to be a few days. Absolutely. Perhaps. Okay. And here's, here's the simple math. Pennsylvania, the counties, the 67 counties, may get between a million and a half and two million votes by mail. Right, so imagine those stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of, of ballots. The law right now says they can't even open, begin opening the envelopes until 7 a.m. of election day. And a lot of folks, in, including the, the counties, are pressing the legislature to give them more time, but as of now, they can't even open an envelope until 7 a.m. of election day. Well, you can't count a million and a half ballots in 
you know, what is that, f 13 hours. It's just physically impossible. So that's why, as I said, let's just get used to the idea that it's election week and not election day. Okay. Well, let's talk about the dates for those mail-ins. So yes. there's talk about maybe after the election, they can send them in after. Is there a post date? What's the drop dead dates for these mail-in ballots? Sure. Well, let me, there's three critical dates that folks have to keep in mind. 19, 27, and 3. October 19th is the last day to register to vote. October 27th is the last day to request a mail ballot. But the real answer is if you want to vote by mail, do it now, now, as of uh, October 5th, because that they have to be back to your local election office, in, in, in our case, in Philadelphia, they uh, by uh, 5 p.m. on November 6th, so three days after the election. And that was a result of a, uh, a, a court decision uh, that up, upheld the, the, city, the uh, Commonwealth's um, a decision about when those uh, could, could come in. So if you just do the math between, even between October 27th and November 6th, there's just not enough time to say with confidence that your vote's going to come in. So if you want to vote by mail, request it now. And then in Philadelphia, uh, now, I mentioned these satellite offices that were open last week. There's seven of them. There, there probably will be more. That's a place where you can turn in your mail ballot uh, bef well before uh, the deadline. So if, if you're a little skittish about the post office, just take your mail ballot and find the, the location at phillyvotes.com and, you know, run over there and drop it in. City Hall is one of the so is one of the offices, but there are uh, uh, there are seven others around the neighborhoods. In, in addition to that, so um, I, you know, that's what I'm going to do. I, I think it's a it's a viable option. I'm a little skittish about the post office, and I want to literally hand my ballot to an election official, watch them drop it into the to the secure box, and and that's that's the comfort that I need to make sure that my vote counts. So, so that's the. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you go ahead. So are there, besides those satellite, are there other places where um, people can drop off their votes? Well, probably there will be secure monitor drop boxes in place in, uh, in the city that will be like, think of them as like heavily fortified, uh, you know, post office boxes. Um, and by the way, I, I remind people who are concerned about fraud that tampering with any piece of the election process is a serious felony offense. So for those folks that imagine, you know, people, you know, doing harm to ballot drop boxes or whatever, this is not like a misdemeanor, it's not a parking ticket, it's, it's a serious felony offense. So I'm confident that, you know, if we have drop boxes, they will be secured, there will be cameras on them, that the, the, that the ballots in those drop boxes will only be handled by uh, the appropriate election officials. Um, they won't be, you know, strewn around the, the sidewalk. Um, but again, it, just keep an eye on phillyvotes.com and uh, to see if, if uh, that was, the, the city was planning on putting drop boxes in, but they may come to the conclusion that these satellite offices kind of achieve the same result uh, with, with frankly, less effort. But here's, there's, there, while it's a little confusing and complicated to keep track of all this stuff, um, the, the, you know, there are more choices than ever before in how you can fill out and, and deposit your ballot. So we talked about um, volunteers and the poll workers and the people checking the names and that sort of thing. So how would somebody, can somebody still volunteer for the general election and does your organization help those people? Yep, yep. Um, poll worker, the shortage of poll workers was the main reason why the city had to cut back its polling locations in the spring. And um, uh, because there are a lot of folks that just didn't wanna risk that. The call went out for poll workers, and we were part of that call. And it looks like 
there's been a, a really, really strong response from, from Philadelphia citizens. You do have to be a registered voter and you do, do have to be a Philadelphia resident. So just make sure uh, of those, those two things. And uh, you can find, um, uh, there are several different paths to signing up, um, phillyvotes.com. Uh, Again, our website, 70.org. Um, there also, if, if you're not in Philadelphia or if you just want to use this, there's a website called Power the Polls, powerthepolls.org, I believe it is. And uh, that's a, a national um, uh, website that's collecting people's names and forwarding them to local election officials. Um, the critical thing that we're concentrating on now is training poll workers. The city commissioners provide some basic level training uh, and we're trying to do some supplemental uh, things. We actually started a group on Facebook called the Poll Worker Caucus, which is for people who are intending or who have worked at the polls and it's a chance for them to trade information and, um, and tips, kind of pro tips on how to be a great poll worker because those folks are really critical again to the success of this election. Uh, we need them to be knowledgeable. We need them to be you know, well-trained in dealing with voters with different circumstances. So I would absolutely encourage you, your members, to, uh, to sign up to be a poll worker and then be prepared to, you know, spend a, a, an hour or two getting up to speed so that you can do your job on election day. I've done it, by the way. When we first moved to Philadelphia, I did my time. And it is uh, probably not this time around, but there were long periods of tedium. <laughs> When I was doing it, it was a municipal election. And then there's some like, and then you get faced with some really critical decisions that you have to help voters with. So you mm -hmm. kind of have to know your stuff, but it's, it's a rewarding, it's very rewarding. That's, that's what I would tell people. Yeah, I've done that before. Some days are warmer than others. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's a little activity, some are a little calmer, but it is very um, important to get involved. And it's interesting to see how the whole process works. And like you said, those poll workers and the people working there, they're, they're your neighbors, they're, they're involved in the community. Um, so they're there, not by um, just from the goodness yeah doing, doing I mean, good, so you get paid 250 bucks for the day which for a yeah. um, 13 hour 14 hour shift is not a whole lot of money but no. uh but you uh you, you really feel like you're doing something important and poll workers take their jobs very seriously you know they they know mm -hmm. how critical they are to uh, a, a smoothly run election well, you talked about how we could get involved by um signing up to be a poll worker is there anything else that GPAR or real realtor member could um, help going forward? Well, I sort of talked about it earlier, you know, that, you know, kind of activate your own networks, um, provide uh, sound, uh, be, be a portal to trusted information uh, about uh, this election and, uh, you know, take advantage of, of the roles that, that you and your folks play in the communities and reach out to people and, and connect them to uh, the kind of information that they need. Because, again, I've never, the, the level of anxiety around this election is really extraordinary. And I think people are grateful to those that can relieve a little anxiety. So treat it as an opportunity for, for you. And again, we'd love to, uh, set you up with a, a, the, a we vote briefing if that would be uh, useful um, and that that points you more specifically to the kind of tools and resources that will be useful in uh, reaching out to people very good very good okay so we have a few more minutes left and we usually open it up to q a and uh, i have matt taking a look at those questions um, but before I turn that over to him for the Q&A, I just want to thank you. I think um, what you do is is really great and it's nice, it's comforting, I think, to constituents to know that there's um, an unbiased uh, place where they can go and get um, their questions answered. So um, before I leave, let me ask you this, if you could um, get one message out there um, to everybody and you would like us to get, carry that message out, what would it be? Yeah. 
Well, it's going to involve the word early. <laughs> so <laughs> make, make a plan to vote now and vote early because you can do that at these satellite election offices or if you're choosing to vote by mail. This is a little bit like folks have said, you know, in the early days of the pandemic, we were all encouraged to, to we needed to flatten the curve, which is uh, why the, you know, precautions around wearing masks and social distance and so forth were important. We need to flatten the curve around voting uh, so that, um, so that our local election uh, 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 officials don't get overwhelmed and voting by mail or voting in one of these satellite offices is one way to flatten the curve. So it means shorter lines on election day, less concerns then about uh, the pandemic and people's uh, health on election day. So uh, I just encourage you to, again, make a plan now and, um, and try to vote early uh, or, or execute that plan at least early uh, out of, uh, you're, you're doing something good for yourself and for your neighbors and for our local democracy, if you can, uh, if you can pull that off. All right, we have our marching orders. Vote early. <laughs> Get it out there. All right, Matt, do we have any questions in the chat box here? That uh, anybody... So Stephanie, we did have a question, but it seems like it was already answered, but um, we'll just follow up with that. And that was relating to where you can drop off your ballot into uh, locations. So David, it kind of sounded like there's the possibility of more locations will be added. Um, yeah. And if so, what's the timeline for when that information will be put out to voters? Yeah, uh, I think the, the short story is ASAP. Uh, but right now, again, there are set in Philadelphia, there are seven satellite offices and you can, even if you get a ballot at home, you can drop your ballot <laughs> off there. Um, I would say within the next week or so, uh, the, the city, if they can, will add more satellite uh, offices and will also make decisions about uh, drop boxes. So, uh, you know, voting activity and interest typically gets going about, I mean, it's been extraordinary this year, but it gets going in earnest maybe three weeks out from the election. So uh, I think that would put us you know, a week or so from now. So that, that's when I would hope that the commissioners would uh, execute that, that plan. And, and that's when I would, I'd check, Phil, again, phillyvotes.com to, uh, uh, to uh, see the current status on that. Okay, with that, I think we've taken care of everything in the chat. Um, David, thank you very much for your time, your insight. Thank you for the work that the Committee of 70 does. Um, you, your board of directors, your professional staff, uh, great time to be in your work for sure, right? It, uh, the impact, the meaningfulness of it, um, and then also to what lies on the horizon even post uh, the election with, yeah. with voting districts and all that kind of stuff like that. So uh, the timeliness of you being here with us, it couldn't be any better, right? Yeah. Um, hey, I, I have to put in a quick plug for uh, an important event for us on October 20th. Uh, some, some of you may have been or, or know that we, we uh, in the old days, i.e. last year, uh, we had an annual uh, luncheon uh, at the Bellevue or thereabouts uh, to, to raise money for our efforts. We're doing that virtually this year, October 20th. Uh, it is, uh, we're calling it uh, 70 Minutes, uh, a special election edition. It's sort of like a, a, a handcrafted you know, television special brought to you by the Committee of 70. We've got national uh, uh, folks weighing in on the election, its consequence and its meaning, and also sort of where we go from here. And uh, we've opened it up to individual tickets. So you don't, you don't have to, uh, you know, uh, be a, a corporate sponsor, but uh, encourage you to take a look at that again, 70.org, the website. And uh, I think it's going to be it's a it's it's must see TV as they say. All right, sounds good, well, Stephanie. Any wait, closing Matt, words? Yeah, I do. I want to say something, David. Be warned, because Commissioner Schmidt was on our coffee talk, and then the following week he was on sixty minutes. So you never uh, know. <laughs> Your seventy minutes might be a sixty minute gig. Might be as week. close as I get. <laughs> <laughs> so, but. It, it's been great. Thank you so much. You're my pleasure. Best, uh, best of luck to you all.
All right. Thanks, okay. everybody. Have a great day. Have a great week. Thanks. And keep an eye on your inbox uh, for more communication from GPAR. All right. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Have a great week.